Hi everyone, thank you for joining us in ACME's 2020 NAIDOC program. I'm Kate Tamburin, a Tanarong woman and curator at ACME, and I'm pleased to be chatting today with Tony Briggs and Tracy Rigney about projects that they've been working on together, including their short film Elders, which is currently screening internationally and will be back for us to view later in the year. First and foremost, I would like to acknowledge that I'm on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and I'm talking to you today from their lands. ACME would like to acknowledge that our museum at Fed Square is located on the lands of the Wurundjeri and the Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation, and we pay our respects to their elders, both past and present. I'd also like to acknowledge our Vic Nadoc community and all of the people both with us today and those who have come before us who helped make NADOC happen and continue today. Now, I just, maybe Tony, I'll throw to you to introduce yourself. Yeah, hi, I'm Tony Briggs. I'm a, a Yorta Yorta Wurundjeri man, <clears throat> and um, I'm a writer, director, um, budding producer, <laughs> um, and I'm living on Wurundjeri country, so I wanna pay my respects for my elders of the Kulin Nation and um, past and present. And, um, and uh, my respects to the youth as well, who are coming up and will be the next leaders. Um, over to you. Thanks, brother. Hi, I'm Tracy Rigney. I'm a Wajibalik and Naranjeri woman from Dimbula, Victoria. I'd like to acknowledge the lands on which I live and create, the Wajibalik people, and pay my respects to ancestors and elders past, especially my grandfather and elders present today, especially my mother. So for those who are watching who haven't seen Elders, um, can you tell us a little bit about the film? Tracy? Me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, Elders follows the story of a young Aboriginal boy who, I guess it's his first kind of uh, introduction into learning law and he basically goes out bush one day with his grand grandfathers and he's pretty much left there to learn to track his way back out. Great. And what inspired this story? What, um, and why did you want to share it? Well, I guess for me, um, it's a story that's actually based on a true story on um, a story that my grandfather uh, told me uh, many, many times. Um, so I guess for me, it's just a story that's just stuck with me my whole life. And I've always wanted to do something with it. You know, you've got so many stories kind of floating around in your head and I just knew one day I'm going to do something with it, but I didn't exactly know um, what. Um, and I just felt like it's a story that needed to, um, to be shared with others because, you know, it's, it's set down here in Victoria. Um, it didn't happen that long ago. So, you know, um, our culture is very, very strong and still very alive and, and, um, and evolving down here. And, uh, yeah, I just, um, I felt like, you know, visually it would just be a really beautiful um, story to, to share and to tell and to really um, uh, highlight the beauty of our landscape as well in our mm. country. Mm. And Tracy and I, Tracy and I um, have wanted to... Yeah, I mean, we've we worked together for, for years and we've known each other for, for years. Um, and uh, we, we just wanted an opportunity to work together again. And so we, we've been talking about it for a long time, about doing something together. And, you know, uh, it was a while ago that I said, you know, do you have any, you know, any show I want to direct? I want to start get my teeth into directing a little bit more and give a short film, you know, that maybe we could work on together. And she's like, yeah, I've got this idea I've got a couple of ideas and sent me this one I was like <laughs> are you sure you want me to do this for my first for, you know like this is your oh no no it's all right it's it's fine it's good you know I trust you and um and I was like yeah yeah well I trust you too actually so we just it just happened like that and and it you know it, it sort of coincided with an opportunity through Screen Australia uh, the short blacks um initiative and um and so I submitted that and we got through and we worked on the project and, um, you know, come up Trump. So it's a Screen Australia from Victoria and ABC, um, uh, uh, you know, ABC are, are, were, had backed it all. 
and a string of a series, a uh, series, a, a whole lot of other shorts as well um, from different producers and directors. And so we got into the program and that's how we've uh, ended up making um, Elders. And, and it's, it's still on the circuit around the world it's during different festivals still to this day. We're getting, getting requests almost weekly. You know, so it's been great. It's been, it's had a beautiful life. Oh yeah. And especially, um, you know, getting into Berlin, the Berlin film festival at the beginning of the year was a real highlight, um, for the film. And, and I just got to say, you know, um, you know, kudos to you, Tony, because, you know, it's your first short film you've ever directed and, you know, it got into Berlin and it's still got this amazing life on the circuit. Like that's, that's a rare thing. So, um, yeah, and, yeah. and I totally trusted trusted you and still trust you with, with that story. So, um, and I just felt it was quite appropriate culturally as well that a man tell this young um, boy's story. Mm. So, yeah, it's worked out, you mm. know, perfect. Yeah, that's great. I think, um, yeah, it's so important to share our stories from being Southeast and Aboriginal people um, and sharing our landscapes and all of those sorts of things too. And um, yeah, when I was watching the film, it really came through that sound played such an important role. Um, there's no dialogue in the film. And so the sounds of, you know, they, as he walks along the sand and gravel underneath his feet, the calls of the cockatoos and the crows. Um, mm. And there was this one specific part um, where he approaches a big scar tree um, and he's looking up at it and it's almost as if the ancestors are singing back to him. There's this sort of choiry sort of moment where they're responding to him being there and he puts his hand up onto the tree as though he's, he's recognising that they're there, that they're seeing him and he's seeing them um, and it's this kind of guiding, this guidance that he's getting from the landscape mm. and it was just really beautiful and I think really reflects, you know, this year's theme of, NAIDOC theme of always was, always will be, um, mm. thinking about Aboriginal land and intergenerational teachings and stuff. Um, can you share um, some other ways that you think that theme really comes through in the film? Well, just with that, that, that particular moment, you know, uh, uh, Tracy, uh, Tracy, you know, uh, told us about this tree, and it's a double-sided scar tree. This beautiful old fella, like uh, I was blown away. And so we go around one side and go around the other. We go from one side around the other, and it's like I, uh, I, I had, I'd rarely seen a double-sided scar tree. They're, they're pretty rare, I think. Um, and you know, you kind of summed it up really well, to be honest with you. Uh, we, we just sort of wanted to, Tracy and I discussed this, you know, of course we discussed this at length, I, I remember, um, wanted to kind of talk about the fact that no matter uh, how hard that they have tried, the, the colonisers have tried, um, they, they, there, are, there are remnants of us everywhere and right in front of their very eyes, you know, and, and on, our, on our landscape. And... Um, you know, putting uh, Tracy. Tracy wanted to. Well, what we did was we put in uh, the. You know, uh, the the the. Um, it was like a. Uh, we put in the initials GB in there, and the and the young fellow touches touches it, and we see, and he's you know, it's Great Britain was here, GB was here, so it's 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 like they're always present, you know, and they've always done their damage, no matter where. And no matter no matter how, it's always there. But yet, we're still we're we're here stronger. So that the what so what's what's sort of dominating in that really is the the actual scar itself and this and this beautiful little face, little this beautiful, you know, little little boy is sort of listening to his ancestors through that tree. He's taking the power through that tree and the strength of that tree to find his way home. And he and he remembers, you know, he's remembering what what pop had told him and he's like, Oh, I know what I've got to do. And, you know, he's going to, so, you know, it's, it, it's a real, it's one of my, definitely one of my favorite moments in that short little piece. There's a lot of them too. And that, that Tracy has written, it looked powerful too, you know. And shot beautifully, I must say. Yeah. And directed really beautifully. Um, you know, it was absolutely intentional that I, uh, 
I wrote the story with no dialogue uh, for various reasons. Um, and, you know, sound, the sound design absolutely plays such a crucial, um, you know, role within, within the film. So, you know, um, yeah, that moment for me is a really poignant moment. And, you know, Tony, like I never realised that Tony had never seen a double scar before because we've actually got a few of them on our country up here and we've actually got ones with three scars too. <laughs> I've got to show you, it's not when you come up, Tony. Great. But, um, I just knew, you know, like, I guess, you know, always was, always will be. Well, it's, you know, we haven't left. You know, I'm, I'm still on the, the, the lands of my ancestors, um, still here, still thriving and surviving and, um, you know, also with the privilege of creating and, and helping tell our stories and get them out there to the wider world. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. And I think it was also present in... Um you know, the relationship of the two elders sharing their knowledge, passing their knowledge down onto this young boy who's going to step up and he's going to create that strong next generation who will carry those stories on. So, yeah, it was really, it's just such a stunning film. Uh, and congratulations to you both on um, making it and all of its successes. And um, I'm really interested to hear more about the next project that you're working on, which is adapting uh, Tony Birch's um Miles Franklin shortlisted novel, The White Girl. Um, so how did you both get involved in that project? Well, um, our producer who produced Elders, Damien Pradier, she uh, submitted, uh, the, su submitted, you know, the project to, to the, uh, it was a competition really for women filmmakers. Um, and it's a global thing, um, but headed by an Australian and driven by Australian um, and supported by Screen Australia too. Um, and uh, we, we sort of, you know, we're doing a lot of, as everybody is, especially at this time, you know, kind of developing a whole lot of other different things. And so we just had our heads into other things and then out of nowhere this email popped up and we got the offer to, you know, we, we got through and we're like, oh, So, you know, <clears throat> we've been... Um, Oh, so that's how it happened. But in, for, you know, it's called At a Girl, and that's um, you know, it's for women, of course. So I initially I wasn't really kind of that engaged with it because I thought I'll just get in the way and I'll do focus on other things. So, um, but it just sort of turned out that I became a part of it, and I was I, I thought well, no men are allowed, but that's not the case. And there's there are other men involved as well, and so it's worked out really well that we're able to. Um, you know, work together on this because, you know, this is Tracy's first feature film opportunity um, that she will get to write and direct. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think that um, these kind of initiatives, are, uh, there aren't enough of them for, for you know, women filmmakers um, and, and nowhere near enough opportunities for black women. And, um, you know, Tracy's a way more accomplished director than I am. And, and I just, it's just a no brainer, it's just a, a no brainer to me. So, and she's, you know, I don't, I don't know if anybody knows this, but um, <clears throat> Tracy uh, was in the second unit of the Sapphires and she directed the very opening sequence that we see of the girls running through the paddock. And um, that, like, I, I was actually talking to the director a couple of days ago and he brought it up again. Every time we talk, we, you know, intermittently have conversations. Every time we do, he, he always brings that up. We always talk about that. So, and, and just how much we brought to the, to the film itself. So, you know, to see, and, you know, it was the first time, I think, Trace, wasn't it, that you had an opportunity to do, I think, um, something like that in the feature. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like Wayne came up to me and he's like, oh, you know, yeah, I want you to kind of break away from, you know, go with a breakaway crew and do second unit and, um, you know, shoot this and that. And I'm like, yeah, sure, I can do that. No worries, Wayne. Yep, yep. Anyway, that night I couldn't sleep. I was like freaking out thinking, what am I doing? And my heart's like pounding in my chest and I said the words like sleep. And then um, anyway, like, yeah, we just went away. And I must say Maddie Temple, the... Um, the camera operator was fantastic so I felt right at home and yeah we shot what well I didn't actually think it was going to feature in the film but when it did I was yeah quite blown away and um very very surprised but very you know very proud as well so 
and grow. Yeah, you know, like these things are, are, are about opportunities and being cognizant to the fact that us uh, as, as black filmmakers and we as black filmmakers, male and female, don't necessarily have the opportunities that, you know, some other filmmakers have, but yet we still got the, you know, definitely got the skill and the, the experience. And, you know, we're not all sort of aspiring, aspiring directors, aspiring producers, aspiring writers. We're accomplished writers, directors and producers in our own right. And I think, you know, when you are in a position sometimes, which sometimes I am, to be able to help or at least, yeah, help, I guess, um, then uh, I think it's sort of, it's what we have to do. It's what we do as blackfellas. That's why we have survived for so long. That's why we are still here because we, we support each other. And I think it's vital and really important for people to um, understand that moving forward. You know, it, it is, it is the reason why, because we, we are here for each other first and foremost. And then, then that, that ensures our survival, you know, into the future in, in whatever, uh, whatever way you, you want to, you know, um, articulate that. Um, and, you know, and a, pr a perfect example, another perfect example is the story itself, the book itself. Um, Tony Birch came to Damien and I and said, you know, I'd, I'd like you to consider doing this book. And it, it totally blew us away. Like we, it was, it's not like it wasn't on our radar. We were actually, we had actually talked about it, but we never we never had the opportunity to sort of contact Tony first, uh, Tony uh, first, or anything like that. It just happened like that. And so that's an that's an example of you know you mob sticking by each other and helping each other, and together we can really grow, and together we can really make a massive difference, not just to our personal circumstances, but to the circumstances of uh, uh, you know our 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 people, our extended family, our our mob, you know. And we do this, I know it's one, of the, it's one of the main reasons, if not the main reason why I do what I do and have done what I, what I do for so long. Um, I, I want to be a big part and an integral part of, you know, telling our stories. And I've always said this, and, and while I'm doing it as best as I can, um, when I'm able to do it, help, help my mob you know, who, who uh, also have this similar kind of dreams and aspirations. Um, so, you know, for Tony to bring the story to us was such a gift. So, oh, <laughs> I can't, like, I feel forever in his debt. I mean, yeah, you know, we have to get the thing done, but I feel really, you know, it's off to a flying start. We've got an amazing team of people with us and supporting us. Amazing. So, you know, watch this space. Incredible. Oh, absolutely. And can I just jump in? And, and I mean, like, even like how I got involved was, yeah, Tony and Damien reaching out to me. So again, I feel like that's a gift. And I feel, you know, like, I guess with Tony and, and um, we kind of just fell into this kind of yeah. um, collaboration, didn't we, Tony? Like, yeah. um, I'm going to go backtrack here a bit and tell a bit of a story. Can't help it. I'm a storyteller. So um, when I was still at uni in at Melbourne Uni, um, I got invited up to the National Playwrights Conference up to Canberra. Mm -hmm. And um, up there I was just, I felt so green and just out of my league. Um, and, you know, people will probably tell you that I'm a bit shy. So, yeah, I, I can be quite shy. But um, when I saw Tony, I knew, I had met Tony before, but um, at that Playwrights Conference, you know, Tony really did take me under his wing. I think I was only like 20 or 21, so I was, I was still a baby. Um, and I guess since there, like, um, you know, we've kind of kept uh, in touch, but it wasn't really until um, I worked on the Sapphires that I kind of came back onto his radar and he came onto mine. And then, you know, yeah. we were fortunate enough to, he reached out to me again for the Warriors. So that was another great opportunity for me. And so when it comes to um, Tony reaching out to me for a, a short story for um, him to direct, you know, it was a no-brainer that I, I gift him our elders because he had gifted me so many things throughout um, that, that has helped my career kind of move forward. And it's that reciprocity that we just have as Aboriginal um, people. We just, we just have that. It's just a natural innate thing, I think, within, yeah. um, you know, our, our uh, makeup, our culture. So, um, 
you know, and then again, it's come back with the, with the white girl um, and, you know, Tony Birch gifting that to Tony Briggs and Damien Predier and then, then gifting it to me. So, you know, it's, um, we kind of didn't set out to kind of collaborate like this, but this is just how, how it is. And, and I love it. And um, I feel very, very, uh, you know, privileged to be helping tell this, you know, a wonderful story that, um, and share it with the world. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I <clears throat> excuse me, I, you know, this this story too is is um, it's really it, it's always going to be important. You know, it's it's a story that pays homage to our our women. You know, our Aboriginal women, the strength and resilience of my mother, your mother, and and, you know, your grandmothers and, and, and so on and so forth. You know, this is a really, really important story for us to, to, to share with the world. You know, just so far with some of the people we're working internationally, you know, we're getting <clears throat> um, on, the, on the, you know, putting it together on the production. Uh, a little bit of feedback has come back and always well, a lot of feedback, but always they say, we had no idea, like completely, completely no idea about the stolen generation. And if you think about it in terms of Australian media and, you know, you know Australians being, you know, um, you know, bombarded, I guess, or, or, you know, told about it, you know, when it was at its height, you, know, you, you can be forgiven for thinking that the whole world would know, you know, the Prime Minister doing what he did at the time and all, all you know, all the things that, and the discussion, but that doesn't mean it needs to stop that discussion because, you know, I, I'm actually surprised that people, I'm genuinely surprised that not more people know about, you know, what's happened to our mob, you know, my grandmother, you know, my great-grandmother, you know, my aunties, you know, your aunties, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it shocks me. So I think it's really vital that these kind of stories um, continue to get told in whatever format, whether they're rabbit proof fence or, you know, whether, <clears throat> you know, there's a, there's, you know, elements or women of the sun, you know, for example, or the, we have to keep, we have to keep uh, our stories and our people in the forefront of the minds of the world um, and, Again, that will ensure our survival on another level in a different way as well. You know, our stories have got to survive. They have to survive. And we are, you know, we are, you know, and I say we as filmmakers, um, you know, novelists, you know, um, people in radio, musicians, blackfellas, you know, creatives, artists, we got a vital, um, uh, we have a vital part to play in um, you know, in that survival, a vital part, and that's that's what excites me about telling this story with the right people. You know, people the, with you know whatever the story it is, you whatever it might be. When you're telling these kind of you know, when you're telling a story that has has to be told, it's not it's not necessarily the directors or the writers or the producers and uh, who are saying that this has to be told. It's the story itself. It's the story itself that, that um, uh, has its own life. You know, these things just, it's incredible. Have different types of like, whatever they are, you know, they, they have to be told and they're important. And when you see them, people go, oh, that's a great film. Yes, it's because a whole lot of people got involved in supporting the story, which is a beast on its own. It's, a, it's, a, it's an entity in its own, you know, whatever that story is and this is a prime example of that kind of thing. It's a prime example. Mm, beautiful. I really liked when you were talking about that reciprocity between black fellows always, you know, no one's ever left behind reaching out and bringing up, you know, that next generation and um, which is great. I think that's why it's so great that um, Tony Birch has reached out to you mob to um, produce, direct and, um, you know, help write, um, that story for the screen um, and it's kind of investing in, in our future and our collective future. So that's really great. Um, I did just want to ask Tracy a little bit about the Atta Girl Lab and what that's been like. Um, obviously things have shifted because of COVID um, 
and some of the lab has been online, but do you want to talk us through a little bit about what that um, entails and what you've been doing with that? Yeah, so um, back, oh, I don't even know what month it was, but um, basically they've, uh, because of COVID, we haven't been able to travel anywhere as part of the lab. So the lab's pretty much been all online and, and virtual. So it coincided with the Toronto Film Festival just recently. So we had, um, I think it was about a week of uh, workshops and uh you know, meeting the other uh, other filmmakers from all over the world. I think we're one of 13 projects internationally. So um, majority, I believe, are from Australia, maybe six or seven of us, like teams. So, um, yeah, so basically we, yeah, we just kind of um, all met online um, at all different times of the day and the night because <laughs> it's people from all over the world, literally. Um, I remember them Perth mob getting up at like three or four. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically, um, yeah. So we had a, a kind of a scheduled structured week of a series of workshops to do, uh, with, uh, pitching our, our idea, our story, um, looking at our synopsis, uh, looking at, um, I guess unpacking the story, with this really interesting guy, he uses Lego and uh, basically he helps you get like drill right down to the essence of the story um, using these pieces of Lego. And it just really like for us, for our team, it really just clicked because, you know, we're visual people and just to see him like, you know, have like, you know, Odette, our, our main character as this Lego lady. And then, yeah, just all this other stuff going on. It was really good. So that was, I guess, for me, a, a highlight of the week. Um, and uh, yeah, just, we uh, also got to link in with our, I guess she's kind of like our mentor. Her name's Roshi and she's this really cool woman from um, Germany uh, I believe she's Iranian. Is that right, Tony? Yeah, so she's this really cool Iranian lady, um, yeah, living in Germany with her German husband. Um, and, yeah, she's been, I guess, just um, helping us through the process of of, uh, of the lab. But um, uh, And we also linked in with our story. I guess she's like a story kind of editor or school consultant. So we had to have a proper yarn with her, but um, she's um, a lady from England. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a really cool, like, interesting week to, um, I guess, immerse ourselves in the story, uh, get to, to understand the story more. And, um, and uh, the next uh, instalment of the Atta Girl Lab will see us uh, – I'm, I'm assuming we're going to be all online again, but that'll coincide with the Rotterdam Film Festival early next year. And then the last instalment of the lab will see us. Um, it'll coincide with the Sydney Film Festival. So uh, I would, it's just a guess, but I would actually probably um, say that we actually might meet each other for like in the flesh at that film festival because we, I would say we'd have the opportunity to travel uh, at that time next year. So um, basically, I guess in a nutshell as well, this, this program is to help us fast track uh, the story to uh, a shooting script and then to be financed to be actually shot and, and filmed mm. and edited. Amazing. Sounds like a big process, but it would be great to actually meet people, especially for the final send off. That would be amazing. Um, when can we expect to see the white girl? Tracy's the director. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got to write. So Tony and I, we're co-writing it. So we have to write it first. So um, we're just at treatment stage at the moment and uh, looking to, um, you know, come up with a, a, a first draft uh, early next year. And then... Um, Oh, who knows? I really don't know. That's a, a bit well, of... That, that, if I can interrupt there, you know, it took six years, probably a little bit longer, really, for the Sapphires to get made. Albeit that has, you know, big musical numbers and all that kind of stuff. And But, you know, it's, uh, you know, it takes a long time. I, that, it won't take that long with this um, because we've got a sort of a, 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 
I, I just a different kind of infrastructure. It's a different process anyway. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing probably, you know, 22, it's a guess, 2022. So, you know, I, I think in the meantime, everyone should go out and buy the book if they haven't already or download, buy and download the audio book and get familiar with the story um, immediately. In fact, everyone should do it right now while they're watching this. Download it all. It's a good idea. I think, yeah, it probably took me four days to read the book. I just flew through it. It's just such an incredible story and something that I think a lot of people, even, you know, internationally can connect to, you know, those stories. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's really great. Thank you both so much. Is there anything else that you wanted to add either on elders or on, um, you know, the current projects that you'd like to add to? Well, look, so far, um, it's been uh, good working with Tracy. <laughs> so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully in the future, we'll have um, many more projects to work together on. Um, you know, we've, we talked about, <laughs> we recently talked about a crazy, very crazy story that, that we think we'd like to, you know, um, create. Um, but I think that'll just have to wait until we've, you know, we'll stay focused on this right now and um, get this up and going and get it to a place where it needs to be and uh, write a few drafts and and then we'll then we'll turn our minds to something else. You know, as a, as in terms of a collaboration again, I think after that. Absolutely, it's um yeah, it's been a bit of a wild ride like so far with um, the White Girl Project in terms of just how quick. Um, you know, we've kind of been surrounded by this amazing support and uh, really nurtured. And um, I've got to also say that Atta Girl Lab people have been absolutely flexible with us as well because it's also new to us, um, you know, this project. Like, yeah, I flew through the book. I love the book. I just, Birchie's words, oh, you know, he just has a way of, of telling that story and just the characters. I just, I love the characters. I love the setting. It's so familiar to me. You know, I live in a very small, you know, rural country town. Um, and yeah, it just, just resonated with me on so many levels. So um, it's just, yeah, it's just really exciting to be uh, able to, you know, help tell, tell these stories. And it's exciting to be uh, uh, an Aboriginal um, filmmaker, Aboriginal woman. And I just think, you know, there's so many opportunities if, um, if people are considering, you know, wanting to get into filmmaking, there's so many opportunities and, um, and it, it really is a, uh, you know, once you find your, your people, it's, you know, it's a really supportive and nurturing environment. And uh, yeah, I just, um, yeah, it'd be great to see other, other young ones or, or older ones coming up. You know, we need, we need more producers. Uh, we need more uh, cinematographers. Uh, we need more editors, you yes. know, we need, good, good you know, point. Yeah, good it'd be point. great to have, you know, a crew and you just see like a sea of, you know, black faces, you know, things like that. Like, yeah, come on. Yeah. You, the, you don't always have to be in front of the camera or directing or even writing. There's, there's so many other opportunities um, on one project alone. Um, you know, it, it, th these kind of things don't happen just with, you know, a handful of people, N not even short film, you know. Um, there's there's so many different avenues to be involved in this industry as blackfellas, you know, and the time is right now. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, I support what Tracy's saying. If you've got any aspirations, don't be afraid, you know, really go for it because people are there to help. That's beautiful. Thank you both so much. And I think that truly reflects the idea of... Um, always was always will be you know these are our stories um and it's amazing when we get to share them and be in control of those narratives and you both are doing such incredible work um and yeah bringing up that next generation that's amazing so thank you both very much thanks Kate thanks thank you for having us thank you very much